So this brings us to the Chomsky hierarchy. So language complexity is defined by the constraints of a production rules to generate a language. So we distinguish four types of grammars that form different types of languages. The easiest language you could consider is regular languages. You, in regular languages, the rules that you can apply is something A to A and A to AB, which are pretty much production rules we saw here, where A is a non-terminal, but you can have on the left side, which is a symbol that you want to replace with something, only a single non-terminal. And on the right side, you can have pretty much arbitrary, an arbitrary uh, string. Okay, this allows you, for example, to generate a language like a to the power of n with n we go equal to zero. So we can create arbitrary long strings, which is what we did for the binary. Okay, so the next language type two is context free. So a goes to alpha. And alpha is a string now of terminals and non-terminals. Okay, so that's different from this regular language in that sense that here we have only two types of rules. We have a rule where a, a, a non-terminal goes directly to a terminal or a non-terminal goes to a non-terminal and then, uh, sorry, to a terminal again and then to a non-terminal. Okay, so there is not two non-terminals here or four or five while here you can create arbitrary long strings on the right hand side and you can include as many as you like of the non-terminals on the right hand side as well. So this allows you to generate now a language like a to the power of n and b to the power of n. So actually a quite a nice exercise. Um, the next language is type 1 which is context sensitive. So here you can include now on the left hand side for the first time you can include more than one non-terminal and you can include also terminals on the left hand side okay and the right hand side though has to have a, a certain specific shape yeah while now the type zero ones well we say they are recursively enumerable they are more ge most generic. All they have to do is they have on the left hand side there must be some kind of non-terminal somewhere. Here you can have one non-terminal. So similar to context sensitive but the right hand side here is also free for you to choose anything. All right um, yeah and the difference is that here gamma this gamma here cannot be empty okay so that's the main difference type 0 here you can have some uh, left hand side that get translated to nothing all right um yeah so basically the regular languages they are also context free languages and context free languages are context sensitive and context sensitive are recursive enumerable so this forms really this hierarchy and um, type 3 languages, that's what we look at, which are these regular languages. There are regular expressions and finite automatons as tools that will be able to match them. And those concepts are really powerful and they are also identically in what they are able to do. Okay, so regular expressions and finite automatons both can match those regular languages. And you can say that all programming languages are generally in this area of context free. So in this table here, they are type two. So that's far down this hierarchy, right? You may wonder why are they not recursively enumerable? The problem is that the runtime to basically pass such a language and just decide if a, a, word, a string, which in our case probably is a program, if that is a valid program or not is significant for anything that is context sensitive. So we need something that goes rather linear, so in time O of n. That's why we look at context free, more context free languages. So 
context free languages um, but they also use simple tables which we learned in the compiler lesson so it, this adds a little bit of context sensitivity but it isn't that context as complex as those context sensitive languages okay